G'day, I'm Andrew, a lawyer for the Townsville Boards and Online. Here we are at the Crocs Club where we get an exclusive introduction to new coach Paul Woolpert. We get to know both the man and the coach in this two part series. Cool. Alright, well, um, Paul, firstly, thanks for uh, coming on to Townsville Boards and Online to, to do this. Um, I guess first and foremost, you've got to ask about the, about the Crocs. Firstly, how happy are you to be here and what do you think you can succeed in your first year? I couldn't be more pleased. Um, thanks for, for having me, by the way. Um, couldn't be more pleased. Super excited to be here. Um, obviously, coming off last year's success, uh, I think we had a brief taste of, of success, but we didn't get to what we wanted to achieve, and obviously that's winning a championship. And um, I've been fortunate enough to win some in the past, and um, that's the only reason I'm here. Uh, it's the only reason I think you start a season out is to, is, is to have that one goal of winning the championship. And, uh, hopefully my, my uh, experience and, and uh, one year's growth together, uh, we can get closer to that this year. What did you feel like when you were standing there, a defeated assistant coach with Trevor Gleeson last year, uh, on your home court at a semi-final when there was so much expectation? Was it one of the most bitter things that you had experienced? Yeah, uh, it's different as an assistant. As a head coach, you feel the, the entire weight on you. Um, I told Trevor immediately after the game, don't feel bad. Uh, we got out front. We didn't lose. We got beat. Uh, and I firmly believe that. There are two teams working their tails off to win a game. And at times you have to give your opponent credit. And can Stipans outplayed us. Uh, it's that simple. Um, and you have to take your hat off to them and go back to the drawing board and say, okay, now what do we got to do to make sure that doesn't happen um, next year? But you, you learn from everything. And, I, and hopefully we learn from that. And I think one thing you have to learn is I don't want that, that taste in the back of my, my mouth again. So, you know, maybe you work a little harder in training camp, you work a little harder during the regular season, or you work harder off season like right now to get better than to anything to, to, uh, to make that not, not come about again. What was missing last year? Was the roster, was the personnel too weak to win a championship in No, I think I think the regular season proved it wasn't too weak. I think, you know, at times, uh, one of the things, the first things I told Trevor uh, at the beginning of the season, I think at times uh, we could be too soft as a team. I don't think, I don't think um, sometimes when teams challenge us physically, I don't think we stepped up and met that challenge. Uh, and that's kind of my personality is I'm going to step up and, and meet that challenge and, and hope that I can lead our guys in the same direction. But, you know, it's a physical game and it's based on physicality. And when they challenge that, if you're a man, you've got to step up and meet it. One of the guys that was the hardest people for and the hardest workers last year was Roselle Ellis. At what point is the negotiations with him, or is that, has it even started, and do you want him back? I told Roselle probably 10 years ago when he first played for me, 11 years ago, 12 years ago, oh we won a championship in the CBA in 2000, and uh, I told Ro, as long as I'm coaching, I have a spot for you on my team. Uh, now that being said, he'll be 37 next year, uh, but as, in, in, in the physical abilities he had that he's lost, I think he's gained in his in his uh, approach to the game, his mental approach, and, and, and how smart he is. Um, but I, I told Ian, um, in all probability, as far as I'm concerned, I think there will be a lockout in the NBA, and I think there's a very good chance with the people I know and, and uh, uh, players I know and, and people I know in the NBA, I think we can get some really good players here. Um, in Townsville because of that. So we are in no hurry uh, to get uh, uh, to sign anyone at this point. I think we're going to kind of test the waters and see who's there. But Roselle is, is always uh, in the mix, no question. Will you put a time frame on these last four positions because they're two imports and basically two Australians. Uh, a lot of names have been thrown up for a lot of those positions. Have you got a time frame at all that you want to start at least? I personally don't have a time. Uh, again, I've been here two days. Uh, we're having a meeting this afternoon about it. Uh, and we'll, you know, we we'll kind of pare it down a little bit. Um, but again, I would rather do things right rather than right now. Uh, so you know, we'll we'll sit down and we'll definitely compile a list and, and we'll we'll get guys uh, that, that will play the type of brand of basketball we want to play. But but like just like uh, uh, the imports, I think. Whoever the last two Australians are, they'll be carefully uh, chosen as well. One of those uh, Australians is Chris Cedar. Uh, he's playing for the Heat. Now, what do you think of young Chris? You saw him a lot last year as a development player. Do you think he has what it takes to, to, to be in this league? Is he going to be strongly considered? I think skill level, he definitely has what it takes. Um, 
Obviously, I, obviously I didn't get to see him play, and I didn't get to see him play with the Heat. Um, hopefully, I'll get to soon. Um, but he's got the ability to play, no question. Um, point guard's the hardest position there is to play. And you have to be able to command in the locker room. You have to be able to command the guys on the floor. Uh, so you've got to be a, you've got to be a leader. Um, whether it's vocal or just by example, you've got to be a leader. And I think that's something he has to work on. Just in a short period of time, I got to see him last year. Tell us a little bit about what you think of the squad, the guys that, you're, that are at your disposal. You highly rate Peter Crawford and Luke Shamsen. You've said that on record a number of times. Tell us about maybe the captain a little bit, Russell Hinder. Uh, I told Russell last year early, after maybe two or three games, that I thought uh, he was kind of uh, giving up too much of his offensive game. Uh, I think when you're playing against an opposition, they'll kind of realize what you're doing and what you're trying to do, and I think you've got to keep him honest. I think he was passing up his shots. And he was probably taking 60 to 70 percent of the shots from threes, whereas he's still a, a very talented weapon inside. So he's got to. Um, sometimes you've got to sacrifice by being a little more um, aggressive, and uh, I think he was sacrificing the other way. Uh, he's a very talented basketball player. We know that. Um, I, I like the way he grasped uh, the leadership role. I know that uh, he had never been a, a captain before at any level, uh, so he really he went after that and, and went after it with zeal, and I, I appreciate that. Um, I think. Uh, I'm going to just going to let him know he could be more of a basketball player. Uh, you know, I think we need that. I think the readership will always be there, but I want him to turn more energy into, into playing. Nick Cedar, uh, a lot was said about him as being a fringe boomer. Now, do you think he was shortchanged? Do you think he should be in the Australian team? Or do you think he should take this as genuine motivation to get there within the year? I think he's a motivated guy. Uh, you know, and there's always, we motivate ourselves different ways. Uh, if that'll motivate him, great. Uh, but I think he is a, uh, at one point he will be a boomer. I, mean, I think he's a, he's a great basketball player. I think we got to remember, he's a, I believe he's 24. Yeah. And he's been on this team for five or six years. So, you gotta uh, remind yourself, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I was here five years ago, just came for a month and hung out with Trevor and came out into the gym here and watched, watched him shoot around. And, he was like 18, and uh, he was very mature at that point. So, uh, you know, he's got six or seven years under his belt. Um, I think now it's time to step up for him to be taking a little bit of a leadership role. He's, we all know how, how he can shoot the ball. Um, he's an incredible shooter. We've got uh, my job, I shouldn't say we, my job is to make sure I get him those shots. Um, I think we have to really take advantage of the fact that we have Luke inside and uh, we have to play inside out all night. And when we have guys who can shoot the ball, um, you know, like a Mick and like a PC, uh, you know, good things will happen. So uh, Luke is proven to be very uh, uh, proficient from passing from the inside. And so if they don't come double him, go to work. If they do find out where the double team's coming from, get the ball quickly to a shooter. And, you know, with uh, uh, Mick out there and PC, you know, that's, that's pretty too pretty good weapons down out there. On a more holistic uh, viewpoint of the National Basketball League, what do you think of Australian basketball and the league level in general? I think it's outstanding. The number of NBA players, uh, guys who've been in the NBA, uh, guys who've tried out for the NBA, a lot of guys obviously who've played in, in the uh, American collegiate level. Uh, the first thing I told Trevor, after the, I showed up last year, game day, a second game of the season in Wollongong, went to the first game and was uh, very surprised at how physical it was. Uh, it's probably more fiscal. They let guys get away with more than they do in the NBA or the league or the CBA. Um, but it's consistent. Uh, you know, they, they go after it each other physically. Um, it's, it's no way is it dirty, uh, but it's very physical. And I think uh, uh, I've always been a, a firm believer in getting in the weight room and getting stronger. And, um, we have a great guy here in Cam Whiting for that. And so we got to take advantage of that. We've got great facilities here. And that's one thing I want to see our guys this year is definitely being stronger physically than they were last year.